and welcome to another episode of Fubar. Bar. In today's video we are going to talk about how to make a CI CD pipeline with Amplify console so you can collaborate with multiple team members. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post videos on Tuesdays and on Thursdays, so let's get started! <laughs> So this is another episode in the series about uh, Amplify. I have built a full application, you can check it out. We build a kind of image gallery where you can upload images and you can delete them, other people can see those images, you can tag them with machine learning and all these kind of things. And one thing I was pending from that uh, series was to add how to do the CI CD pipeline. So I want to go back to that series and finish that <laughs> because I think it's very important to uh, be able to have a team working in an Amplify project, being able to deploy the project. So I think that's something I want to show. So in this video, I will show you all the steps from uh, where we stop in the gallery. So having this local project into using GitHub, our, like our source repository, and then using the different branches to define different stages and how pull requests can help us. You will learn a lot. So let's get to the code. So let's get started with our project. The first thing we want to do is I don't want to focus too much on the Amplify project that we are going to the CI CD for. So I will grab this demo Amplify base, follow the instructions and uh, basically have something ready. So I will git clone this from my GitHub repo. It's available for everybody. So I will put it Amplify CI CD test because I have that project already. <laughs> so that will clone into that repo. Then we will follow the steps and get the Amplify up into the cloud. And yeah, from there we can take it. So I will kind of speed through these steps. Um, if you want to do the same steps than me, you don't have an Amplify application because this is something you can do with any Amplify application you can basically open the uh, project. There is a readme file and there are all the steps that I will be following. I will follow all of them until we basically deploy everything into the cloud. Then from there we are going to take. I will not add the search because the search, the elastic search takes forever. So I don't want to add that, but uh, until step uh, 13, I will be doing. So this is done. Now we can open our application in the local host. This is not deployed into the cloud. Let's see if it works. Good. We need to create a user. Let's test this. You can put any phone number, but remember to put a real email. So you will receive your um, confirmation code in the email and then you can type it here and now we can log in good we can add a node so this is the app it's local it's not in uh, the back end is in the cloud the front end is in local host so what we want to do is to deploy to the cloud a full stack application there is many ways to do that. We can just do Amplify host and that will basically host the front end in the cloud with the backend that we just deployed. But this is not really practical if we are working with uh, production applications. So what we want to do now is to create a CI CD pipeline using GitHub. So for that, the first thing I will do is to create a new GitHub repository. So I will go into my GitHub, I will do new repository and I will put the name of Amplify CI CD test. I will make it private because I will remove this after we finish. Yeah, I don't need to keep this and I will create the repository. And then I can push all my project into um, this GitHub repo. 
So back to code, I need to commit all the changes. I will commit everything, I think. Everything can be committed because there is a git ignore already. So we can do a initial commit, always very descriptive. And then we just push this to the repo. So good, now we have our repo here. The next thing we want to do is to open the Amplify console. So we are going here and we do Amplify console and that will open us the Amplify console. We need to lo be logged in to our AWS account and basically everything uh, in the right region. So when we are in our Amplify console, you can see the name of your application. That's a very descriptive name. We can see, I will make this a tiny bit, bit smaller. We can see that it's not connected to any, um, any Git repository, but we will do that in a second. And if we go to the backend environments, we can see we have one Marcia. I call it Marcia because I want to make sure that you know this is a developer uh, environment. This was de deployed using the Amplify CLI from the developer's machine. This is not what we want. We want to have a full CI CD pipeline. So for that, I'm going here, front end environments. In this case, I'm going to git, GitHub, GitHub, but you can click any other. I will connect that. If it's your first time using this, you will need to do some authorization. I already have configured it. If not, uh, you will be in the same path than me. Then all your repositories will show and I will pick Amplify CI CD test and your branches will show. In this case, we only have one branch that is master. If you have a monorepo, then you can pick your folder. In this case, we don't have a monorepo, so we are just picking the branch. So this is a simple thing. Click next. And then here it asks uh, the name, it's the same, the frameworks, it's React, Amplify for the backend. And then here uh, it will ask, select a backend environment, create a new one. And here I will call it production because this is our master branch. So we want to be production. And then we need to have a role. If you don't have a role already that allows you to do this, just go and follow the instructions, create a role. And here we have a build script. In this case, it's just written for us. We don't need to do anything, but if we want to change it, we can edit it here. I will not recommend you to change it. And then there are some advanced uh, settings where you can have your Docker image if you want to do some uh, testing or something in particular, if you're passing some uh, environmental variables, if you want to find what is the version of Amplify that should be used to um, deploy your application. So if you're using an older version of Amplify, you want to set it up here, if not just leave the latest, but I'm not going to touch that. Then we click next and we review everything and we save and deploy. And now we need to wait because this will grab the code from GitHub and then it will run if we have some tests, we don't, uh, <laughs> and do all the things for us. So you can see here in the front end environment, we have master and now we see that it's provisioning, then we will build, deploy and verify. And then this you can define in the build script. So if we click here, we should see logs. Let's see, oh, the provision succeeded. But yeah, if we click there, we can see the log. So here you can see uh, what is happening in that uh, step. Then you go to the build. You can see that it's cloning the repo and doing whatever. And you will start seeing all the steps as they move forward. I will fast forward this until everything is green. So this is done. If we go now here, we can see we have our application in a domain called master and then an URL. And then we can see that if we go to backend environments, we can see this production one that is the one that we just deployed. So we have the front end environment, the master. And what if we want to have multiple branches? So if we want to have multiple branches, we can go back to our project and we can do git uh, branch develop. So 
So now we have developed branch and I will just do a super tiny change so we can have something there and we can push it. See up JS, let's see here if we can nose up dev. Uh, git push origin develop. So now if we go back to our git, we should have two branches and we have develop here. So we want the flow to go like this. The developer is coding, then it will push to develop branch. Things will get done there. Then if everything is good, a pull request will happen and it will push to master and that's our production. So basically develop, it's like our staging. So now we want to hook this develop branch into our project. So what do we do? Again, connect branch and then we choose uh, develop. It comes for us because it detects that it's a new branch. And then here we said create a new environment and I will call it staging. And then next and then save and deploy. And this will start again the process of um, provisioning, building, deploying and verifying for us. And this takes a while. And when that's done, then we will have the new environment in the back end. So let's wait for that to complete and then I will show you everything running. Good. So this is done. Now we should have our URL here. And we don't have an account. Well, we can create one and we will see that we have the notes up there in the title. I will not do that too much work. <laughs> but these are our front end. We have two, two different URLs, one that says master, one that says develop, the backend environment. We have the Marcia that is my local development environment. Then we have production and then we have staging. So basically the developer is coding in the machine. They can push uh, to amplify. They will be pushing to Marcia environment. Then they do some changes and they do a uh, commit to develop. Then that will start deploying into a staging environment. And then we can go to here and go to develop. And we should have here a new change. Why I don't have that? Did I didn't push it? Nope. So let's push that change that is in the here. Let's do new change. It's good. Git push origin develop. And then we wait and here we should see develop has a recent change. Then as soon as develop has a change, then if you go to your Amplify console in here, you will see that develop stop provisioning. And then this again will take a little while. Uh, this is a front end change. So this development should be pretty fast. And then when that's done, then our develop has the new changes already in it. And you should be seeing it from here. So now, as I said, one thing we can do is do the pull request. And if we want to enable previews in our pull request, we can do that. So if we go to app settings, previews, here we can enable uh, the preview uh, for our pull request. So if I do enable previews, uh, I need to install this GitHub app that basically will ask if I want to do it. I will just need to put my password here and that will install it. So let's do that. So let's check the uh, master branch is where we are going to create a pull request. So this should be the one that we need to enable the pull request previews. And then we will want to create a new backend environment for every pull request. This will be quite slow, but then you will have the real result on how the application will look before merging it. So we do confirm. So now we go back to our application and develop still building. So let's wait for that. And then we can do the pull request and see how this works. So let's wait for it. So now this is done. And if we go to the develop, we will see that we have our new um, text. I'm not going there. Just trust me. <laughs> so now we go back to our GitHub project and we can do a pull request against the master. 
and we can do a new change and then we'll create the pull request and this should trigger the um, preview. So if you see here, it says AWS console web preview is in progress. This will take a while. When it's finished, then you will get a link that you can basically go and check the results. Then you can check the results if the results are what you expect. This is deploying the back end and the front end, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> this is a nice thing of serverless architectures. Your infrastructure is pretty uh, cheap, so you can pull it up and you only pay for what you're really using. So putting up this infrastructure and then destroying it, if nobody's using it, is sense or zero because basically it doesn't cost at all. So you can test things in real environments using exactly the same artifacts that will be deployed. And then if everything is good, you merge the pull request and that will get again your Amplify console, trigger one of these uh, steps, provision, build, employ, and then your change will be there. So I know this is very confusing, but this is how it works. Again, let's repeat the process. What we have achieved here, we have a developer that is coding in their machine. They do amplify a push. They will be pushing to the environment Marcia that we have this backend environment Marcia. Then they do a change and they commit it to GitHub and they push to the branch develop. When they do develop, they will be pushing their changes to the staging environment in the backend and in the front end we are going to do the develop. This will trigger again the provision, build and deploy and verify steps. Then the change will be in the environment develop or staging, how you like to call it. Then uh, we will create a pull request from develop to master and before merging that pull request we will have the previews available for that pull request that will create a temporary environment that we are not seeing here where all the changes are visible, the client and the backend. When we like those and everything is good, we merge the pull request and that then goes to the master environment or production environment and we'll again deploy, provision, deploy, test and everything that uh, code into master until it's done. There is a lot of things you can configure here. You can configure uh, testing, you can configure linting, you can configure integration tests, you can do quite a lot of things with the build scripts and with all the different steps. But this is just an overview of the powers that you can have with the uh, building capabilities of the Amplify console in CI CD. The code is available in GitHub. Basically, the code is the basic application that I just deployed. Then from there, everything is uh, just doing the steps. It takes a while. I know deploying this application might take 10 minutes each step, but then you will guarantee that you are getting the results that you want and everything is automatic. So this was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. I hope you're liking this series. I think for now I'm done for a while with Amplify, unless you have something else I need to talk about. There is quite many interesting things related to data store. So if that's something you're interested, let me know. There is also all about the uh, creating really uh, performing applications with Dynamo and Amplify and uh, AppSync. So if those are topics that you're interested, let me know in the comment box below, because if I get uh, comments for something that is repeated, I will do the video with no problem. So that was the video for today. I'll see you in the next episode of Uwa. Ciao, ciao.